Welcome back to Toriko Anime Review Part 5B. Yeah, I decided to do this one because, well, I was rudely interrupted during my last part, so I had to end that one and just do a part two of it, just split it in half. So, this is just continuing from the last video. Alright. So, oh, there's something I forgot to mention. The, the outfits the characters wear in the movie. Tomat Komatsu wears a yellow jumpsuit because normally in the series he wears like a brown, a khaki, or a green one. Here he wears one that's yellow. Sunny pretty much wears, mostly put the same outfit he wears in the series. Never really much difference there. Coco wears the same exact outfit except he has like got purple stripes on it now. Kind of like from like here and here. Toriko, same exact outfit, different color scheme. His his uh vest and his is like jacket portion. His pants are blue, and his undershirt is orange. It's kind of similar to what Goku Black did in Dragon Ball Super. And speaking of Goku Black, I forgot to mention this for my for, let's talk about the crossover between Toriko, One Piece, and DBZ. There is a brief cameo in the end credits of Whis and Beerus. I'm not kidding. Yeah, and this only came out just a few years ago. And I'm like, this is before they showed up on the series. I could have sworn, like, in the actual end credits, you get a chance to see a brief image, maybe a special preview of the Battle of Gods film, where you get a chance to see Beerus and Whis very briefly, even though they don't appear in the actual episode itself. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, and when the episode ends, Torco, Zebra, and Vegeta are still fighting. At the start, at, at pretty much at the starting line, yeah, which is so hilarious, yeah. But in the case of the film, let's see, the villain they actually fight for a good period of time. It's a badass fight between the main villain and the four heavenly kings, and it goes on for a good like half hour. Yeah, it takes up a good half of the running time of the film, which works. And the music is actually pretty good for the most part, and. Now, if this was released here and this was dubbed, I'm sure it would probably get good praise. But in the case of this film overall, this film, the the second film, Toriko the movie, well, I'm going to call it Gourmet Core Special Menu because, you know, it's called something else in the sub. I'm going to call him the Gourmet Core because that's what I call him in the dub. This, by far, is a really game, damn good movie. And it does feel like it, too, because, well, like I said in the previous video, like, like much more smoother animation than they do in the actual series itself because I'm sure like the anime itself probably has a limited budget what they can do per episode this one my, my guess is totally my, 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 must give the animators a pretty good budget in order to do this particular film and for an anime film this is actually pretty usual length when it comes to these particular films now in the case of the first film the only other film I've ever seen that's an anime related movie where it's about that length, is the first One Piece movie. Yeah, that was also 40 minutes long. It's, well, it's also longer than the first Yu Hakusho film. At least, at least this, that film was, in the case of Toriko, the first one for that is actually better than what for Yu Hakusho. And at least they use the right uh, voice cast instead of using a different one for some stupid reason. I don't know why. But overall, this film is good. I give the film a 9 out of 10. It's a great, it has a great story. All the characters get a chance to shine in the film, who actually do show up in the film. And pretty much you can kind of say a good chunk of the known characters who pop up in the series show up in the film, and they're all doing badass things. Yep. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Um, that when Grant, Grant Shano, the Nakamura Sajiro, the IGO president and Topoli's master are about to fight the GI, the GT robots. They're standing on the water. Apparently, they have the ability to do that, and so far in the series, they've never about to explain how in the world they, they can do that. Oh, yeah, and here's something interesting, though. The IGO president, along with Grand Shijio, is supposed to be 500 years old, and in the case of Grand Shishio, I can kind of believe that way she looks. The IGO president, he could be close to probably in his 70s, and look good for his age. But I don't know how in the world that, that somehow, according to some data I read, where he's over 500, it's very bizarre. But yeah. Anything else? Nope, nothing I can think of. But I do recommend this basically for people who are fans of Toriko. It 
does fit into the narrative of the anime because it takes place between a filler and the four. It takes place between Gold Wheat and Four Beasts, which is the second. Th these two are the third and second to last arcs of the series, respectively. Mm hmm. Yep. But otherwise, though, that's really it. So. Stay tuned for part six, so I'm going to cover at least ten episodes of the series, but I'm going to cover the four beast arc. Yep. Excuse me. And that is episodes 114 to 123. That will be in part six. Okay? Yeah, I know this is kind of short, but this is basically a continuation of the last video. But the only reason why that I wasn't able to talk about this in last year because I had to rush to leave because we were going because my family and I were gonna go out to eat. So that's the reason why this video exists. Occasionally this might happen when it comes to video where I'm really interrupted, either dinner is ready or we're going out someplace where I have to cut off the video right here and do a second half later. That's the way it is sometimes when it comes to living with living people living with other people who want to do something, okay? But until I see you on the next video. Bye.